Hi everybody, this is a video response to Mr. Carlson's Lab most recent installment of his Tech Tips Tuesday series called Dirty Little Secrets and in that video he demonstrates a problem with some particular vacuum tubes where when you first power it on the filament will undergo what's called heater flash or filament flash and it looks a little something like this there it goes so and that's definitely no good some some tubes will will have that problem and he demonstrates two different ways to correct that problem and you should definitely check out his video if you're ever into any kind of vacuum tube or a solid state restoration reverse engineering or repair you should definitely look at this guy's um, youtube channel but anyway let's get on with my third solution for this uh, filament flash problem and that is to use thermal time delay relays like this one right here now I'm doing this because I just happen to have a box of thermal time delay relays right here that I've collected over the years and what these things are is basically exactly what it says it's it has a heater filament in there it doesn't glow red hot like you would normally see in a vacuum tube it, it just gets warm enough to heat a bimetallic strip in here which then starts to um, bend and deform a little bit which then eventually closes a couple of contacts in there some relay switch contacts to uh, you know do something in, an, in another circuit and it takes a certain amount of time for that to happen so thermal time delay relay this one in particular is made by Ampurite and it's part number 26 n 2 so that means it's 26 volt on the filament in there on the the heating element and no means normally open and two is the number of seconds the the time delay um, give or take a little bit of of uh, error it's going to be about two seconds when you apply 26 volts so first let's have a look at this tube with filament flash it is an Ampurex, cute little vacuum tube with a bugle right there, 6DJ8 ECC88, made in Holland. And this has two triodes in there with two, in deep, two, two filaments, and they're both in series. There's no center tap, rated for a 6 volt with the two of them in series. But this one, if you give it 6 volts or 6.3 volts, it doesn't actually have any flash at all so I'm going to induce some flash I'm gonna be really brutal to this thing and apply 12 volts and I have tried that already and it 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 does flash when I first turn it on but it still survives okay so right now I'm just bypassing all the other stuff in the breadboard and I'm gonna flip the switch and there you see really bright flash before it settles out to uh, to a nice glowing orange right there okay now I've removed the little jumper wire here that was shorting out this resistor and I hooked up the the uh, thermal time delay relay to the power supply by the way this is just uh, an old vacuum tube filament power supply with uh, with a high voltage side too it's got 700 volts or so on these two terminals right here pin numbers three and four so I really gotta steer clear of those while it's turned on and that's being supplied with a variac just so I can tune it so that it actually does output exactly six volts on on the coil six volts going to to the uh, to the relay tube because that has a six volt filament heater in there this one though needs a 12 volt in order to get that filament flash effect that we saw earlier and when I flip the switch that's just the switch right here on the variac so here's the schematic we've got the filament transformer here with the two different coils we've got six volts going to the heater heating element in the Ampurite 6NO45T thermal time delay relay I don't have any other 6 volt relays that um, have any shorter time period than 45 seconds so this one is a little long for the purpose but it'll do for the experiment 
and that's going to short out after 45 seconds it'll short out this 10 ohm 5 watt resistor which is in normally in series with the the vacuum tube the ampure ampure x vacuum tube got to keep these straight ampure x and ampure right so yeah basically you know it puts puts the uh the resistor in series with the filament to limit the current going through it and then eventually when it gets heated up a little then this thing will um, switch switch on short this out and then the filament continues to heat up to its maximum temperature all right here we go i'm going to flip the switch at the top of the minute So that's the filament voltage there on the fluke multimeter going up even now at seven and a half volts it's still overdriving it because it's really supposed to be a 6.3 volt filament and we'll just sit and watch and i'll fast forward the footage here so we can see there are the switch contacts closed and now the filament's glowing even brighter than it was before. But at least we could see the whole purpose of overdriving the tube in this case is that we can see that there's no flash, there's no filament flash anymore with the, with the relay in here to you know, short out this resistor after a certain amount of time. So it works, it's, that's, a, that's a solution, that's an option. Let's look at some advantages and disadvantages of this. So here's the good and the bad about using a thermal time delay relay in this particular application to prevent the filament flash. Number one, it's very simple, just like a, uh, a switch and resistor solution. It's, it's really, really easy to hook up and understand. It's automatic, just like a uh, MOSFET or some kind of electronic um, solution with a time delay on the gate or the base or whatever you want to do it's it's completely automatic you don't need to flip a switch or anything and old school if you have vacuum tube equipment then you might want to have a vacuum tube solution to your vacuum tube problems some disadvantages now i will link in this ampurite data sheet which has everything that you need to know about these ampurite time delay relays including how to decode the part number so if you can read the part number, then that's really all you need to know um, for the most part with these things. 3 amp right here, that's the maximum rating for the, uh, the contacts in there. So if you've got a whole bunch of 6.3 amp or 6.3 volt tubes all wired in, in parallel, then that's going to draw quite a few amps. If it's only a few tubes or maybe only certain tubes in your circuit are problematic then you might just want to put those on a time delay circuit but yeah 3 amp is the max for the the contacts in these in these things and um, if you need more than that then you might want to use another solution like a transistor or even a relay with some with a rc time constant rc delay circuit going um, to turn on the relay and if you're going to have a relay, you might as well not even have one of these. Just go with the relay straight up to uh, turn on your vacuum tube filaments. Another minor problem is the reset delay. Because it is thermal, it has thermal mass, it needs time to cool down. So here's the um, designed on time for these things. And then after you switch off the, the heating element in there, it takes a certain amount of time for the switch to open up. And so that just, that just means you can't be flipping your equipment on and off real quick um, every couple of seconds, which you normally wouldn't do anyway. And finally, disadvantage bulky, because you know these things are a little bit big, and if you don't have a spot on your chassis for one of these things, you might be better off with another solution that you can mount underneath the chassis. So that's it. As I close out the video, then we can watch the, the relay contacts also close together and turn on this green phosphor neon lamp with the green phosphor on there. And at the top of the minute here, flip it on. Should take about 45 seconds. 
um, Mr. Carlson's lab. If you haven't seen that, that video that I showed at the beginning, uh, his Tech Tips Tuesday, you can certainly watch that and get more context about what's going on here and, and his two solutions. And I offered a third solution. A fourth solution would also be to use a, an electromechanical relay with an RC time delay to, um, you know, give it the time delay, obviously. Uh, that's a fourth solution. If you have any other solutions that you might think of, you can leave it in the comments below. And right there, turned on a nice, nice green. It's a little bright in the camera, but nice uh, glowing green for, as far as I can see. So if you like this thermal relay stuff, then you can also check out my other videos that I made a couple years ago where I just had some fun building circuits like an A-stable multivibrator using these thermal time delay relays. If you like this video or if you, if you learn something, then please give it a great big out of focus thumbs up and thanks for watching and I'll see you later. What? You're still here? You want to see more? Well, since I happen to have four more of these Amperex 60J8 tubes and this one may have sustained some damage in all the overdriving that I've been giving it, giving it twice its rated voltage quite a number of times. I have it hooked up right now to a 100, uh, 120 volt, 10 amp variac straight on the mains. We'll flip the switch, crank up the voltage and see how much it can take. So there's 10, 13, 14 volt, still glowing. 17, 18, man, it's getting bright in there now. More like a light bulb. Woo! Wow! Oh, there it goes. So that was about 35 volt for a few seconds there. That's how much you could handle. So that's just like a uh, photonic induction right there. I popped it.